Hello folks and welcome to Robin's Hood. Yeah, nice rainy day. This is about the third take of this in about two days. <laughs> Believe me, it's getting easier. Um, I'm gonna so I wanna scrap a lot of what I was gonna post uh, yesterday. Uh, not filmed yesterday. I um, I decided I wanna go a little heavier on something here. There's a little something here in America that's, bu that's bugging the hell out of me. You know, and I'm gonna offend a lot of you, but I mean, those of you who know me or have dealt with me before, you know that doesn't mean shit to me. I don't care if I offend you. I'm going to tell you what I'm thinking anyway. I'm the guy who talks about the ten elephants in the room, not just the one. Here in America, <coughs> excuse me, it's raining. I'm old in the air. Um, the past ten years, it's come. You know, it, it's it's been pretty much common knowledge that uh, a lot of corporations give a lot of money to whatever politician they will do the most for them. Now, I hear a lot of people on the left saying, well, it's evil corporations that are destroying America. Yes, it is. I'm going to have to agree with them right there on a, you know, for, for certain, you know, on certain occasions. Right now, Citibank is refusing to do business with any uh, gun manufacturer that makes anything resembling a military-style weapon. Um, you don't want to know something really fucked up about this mess. The Citibank is, uh, they're not going by what any expert or any gun maker says on what they consider military style. It's what they think is military style. Right now, they're considering any remake, any reissue, any fabric refabrication of a Colt 45 as a military style weapon. Because, well... The military used them. We all know about the AR-15. Did you know about the M4? If a company makes an M4 or an M4 replica, they will not get any help from Citibank. Citibank is not the only uh, the only uh, financial institution doing this either. This is just uh, the newest in a long line of bullshit these people try to pull. Right now, we're talking, you know, uh, it's, it's turned into, well, you know, let me let me put it this way. They'll go into a closed meeting with a politician, and the politician will leave with a smile on his face and a sizable donation, as long as he does what the company wants him to do. Used to, we had lobbyists to blame for this. We don't have lobbyists much anymore doing anything. The companies themselves are doing the business, you know, the business transactions with the politicians. In the old days, we called this bribes. Now they call it charitable donations, gifts, stuff like that. Anything but a bribe for which it is. Nobody gets investigated. Nobody even knows these meetings happen when they do. We, the American people, don't know what's happening. They don't want us to know what's happening. If we knew what was happening, we would hang these fuckers. Believe me. You know, the Democrats are saying... Well, it's the big companies, the big corporations. They're evil. They're evil. Well, yeah. In a lot of cases, if you're a financial institution, you got some kind of agenda that you want done. You want to give money to a politician so the politician sees that it's done. Yeah, that's pretty fucking evil as far as I'm concerned. Because we, the American people, don't have a say in this. We don't even know what's going on until it happens. When a politician decides he wants to make this law that, excuse me, garbage truck coming past. It's pretty busy here in the hood. We, the American people, don't know what law is going to come up and be passed by these, these, these phony baloney political bullshit assholes until it happens. Do you think that they've got just one politician in their pockets? Oh, no. They're doing this a lot. Now, I'm, I'm going to correct something here that a lot of you people on the left are saying that it's evil American corporations doing this. Not only them. This has been going along, uh, going on in China for a while. Where having a company, having a corporation, equates to, uh, to the, uh, the, the CEO, the board of directors, however they do it there, having political control. Politicians in China are just figureheads. The ones who run everything, just like here in America, are the corporations. And this has been happening in China for a very long time. And it's not just 
capitalist China. Don't say, well, that's one of the evils of capitalism. No, it's not the evils of capitalism. It even happened in Russia, uh, and, and it happens in Russia. It uh, happened in communist Russia. It happened a lot in communist-controlled China. If a company did a lot of business, if they could, uh, they could get a politician there to do something for them, they would give a sizable donation to the politician so the company could prosper more. So don't tell me that it's capitalism. It's not. It's the, the price of business. A company wants to make more money? Gee, what's the easiest way of doing it? We'll buy the opportunity to make more money. Let's not work. Let's get a politician in our pockets. Hell, there are some companies that have several politicians in their pockets. Right now, Visa has got a shitload of politicians in their pockets. You have a Visa credit card? Guess what? You get a credit card from a political institution, not a, not a financial institution. These people carry a lot of weight in Washington. It's, I'm not going to explain it. Money controls everything. And if you have the money, you can buy the control for everything. Yes, and that's happening. Right now, Citibank and everything uh, having to do with uh, gun manufacturers, that's just the latest of the incredible loads of bullshit happening. We, the American people, need to stand up and say we will not take it anymore. I'm not sitting here agreeing with the left. I'm not, I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I am a Reagan-esque libertarian. No, that's how I've been described. I don't like either party anyway. I don't believe in political parties. I was never invited to one. So why should I like them anyway? But I wanted to get this out here, let you guys know what's being said uh, behind our backs by, uh, by politicians, what's being done behind our backs by financial institutions, and what we can do about it. What we can do about it? Stop using them. Vote these assholes in office out and quit using these financial institutions. Yeah, it sounds harder than what it is. Really. But there is a lot of other side institutions that are up and coming. I, I'll give you guys a list soon. I don't have them on me at the moment. I've read about them overnight. But get the big ones out. Quit using them. Boycott them. They think they've got control? No. We, the American people, have control. We quit using them. Hit them in their fucking pocketbook. Make them go broke. Anyway, on to the next subject. The state of California is wanting to separate into three states. North, uh, uh, North Cal, South, uh, SoCal, and Cal. Now, that may sound like a good thing. They're wanting to do it for equal representation, different demographics. Um, yeah, it sounds great. It sounds wonderful. California is breaking up into three states. Yeah, guess what's going to happen? Those three states are still going to be batshit fucking insane. In the past ten years... Over a million people have left California because of the bullshit. Governor Jerry Brown, he and his father have controlled California for 40 years. Out of those 40 years, another garbage truck, excuse me. Out of those 40 years, 39 of those years, Democrats have controlled 100% of the government. Now, let's take a look at California. The only way you can live in California is if you're exceedingly rich or homeless. The middle class, you know, the people that societies build around are leaving in droves. It is so damn expensive to get a rental truck to move out of California and very cheap to get one to move into California. Really, it's... They're, they're blaming right now. They will not blame... Uh, they're not blaming the amount of... of Foreigners coming to that country, for lack of a better word, or to that state, for lack of a better term, they're blaming everybody else. They're welcoming everybody from uh, from Mexico into California. They're welcoming every Asian into uh, California. But Americans are at fault because we don't want them there. The regular people, honestly, the guy on the street, doesn't know what the fuck is going on. He's tired of it. He's wanting to leave. But he can't afford to leave, and he can't afford to live there. California was the golden state. 
50 years ago. It was a state that people made songs about and movies. Now, nobody wants to be there. Did you know? Did you know this is how bad it has gotten in California? Pinewood Studios. Pinewood Studios here in Atlanta are the number one movie maker in the world. Followed by uh, a co by a company in England, and third is Hollywood. Hollywood, third, the place where everybody wanted to go to get famous and become an actor. Hollywood, fifty years ago, is now falling into destitute. Yeah, it's really. I I think it's really funny too because Pinewood Studios will not use Hollywood esque actors. They will not use actors that are from Hollywood. They will not collaborate with Hollywood. They don't want to be Hollywood. Which is really cool because, well, you know what Hollywood was 50 years ago? That's what Atlanta's turning into. I think Georgia may become the next Golden State. But that's to be seen. I don't know. But anyway, you know, I mean, they're talking about all the drug leniency in California. They're more lenient on drugs. Yeah, that's why you find needles and... And everything all over the all, all over the streets. You find garbage everywhere. California. What they show you of California on TV is a very tiny, small section. I've gone and uh, online. I've researched what's going on in California extensively. It is holy crap, man. We're talking trailer parks instead of neighborhoods now. What neighborhoods there are uh, there are now are so damn decrepit. They're falling apart. The homes are deteriorating. It's turning into another Detroit. And this is all because of liberal control. Liberals have ran this state for 39 of the past 40 years. Governor Jerry Brown and his father have headed this for the past 40 years. They've controlled California. Jerry Brown lives in a bubble. He doesn't know what's going on. Why should he know what's going on? He's wealthy. He lives in a nice home. He's fed by the state. He has a nice, uh, a nice salary. The average person living in California is wanting to leave, but is so broke they can't afford to, and many of them become homeless. I'm not sitting here turning, uh, cutting down Mexicans. There's a lot of poor Mexicans out there. They're fine people. They're awesome. But when, uh, when is enough enough? They're welcoming every Hispanic into that state. They want, it's like they want all of Mexico in there. Yes, California, California has uh, about 10% of the population of the, of the entire country. But they have 33% of people on welfare. Jerry Brown would rather spend $2.5 million uh, on new illegals coming in than to fix a dam, you know, that, that, that hasn't been repaired in 20 years. There's something wrong. With the people in control, their priorities are messed up. And they can't see it. They can't see the problems. I, you know, there are people there in the government saying, well, well the drug problem, we're more lenient on drugs, but let's go take a look at the meth problem, the opioid problem in middle America. No, let's not, because you don't see all the garbage on the streets like you do in California. You don't see needles laying around all over the place. You don't see homeless people piled up along the street in tents. You don't see... People leaving Texas in droves. But you see that in California. But anyway, guys, I got to let this go for now. This is it for this week. Um, hit the subscribe button down here below the video. Um, I'm about to start hitting some heavy shit soon. Believe me, I've got things lined up. You guys take care of yourself. This has been a 4D production. Talk to you later.